Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 9 for May the 1st, 2022. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Liberating Letters. And our topic today, taken from our adult quarterly, is Freed from the Past. Our devotional reading is taken from Romans chapter 8. Uh, verses 2 through 4. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And our print passage today is also taken from the book of Romans, chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 14. Our key verse reads, If we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. As taken from Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 5 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore what it means to live by grace rather than living under the law. Secondly, to discern how following Jesus can impact the way you handle temptations and sins. Thirdly, to choose to live in the power of Jesus' life and resurrection. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled New Walk and Purpose. Our second outline is entitled New Life and Proclamation. And then our third outline is entitled New Power Persuasion. We certainly thank and praise God that we are able to come to you again through the Word of God, uh, through our Sunday School lesson. We certainly thank and praise God for yet another day that He has blessed and spared us. And we certainly thank and praise God for each and every one of you that has taken the time out to uh, share with us uh, uh, in our study of our lesson. Uh, we encourage you to uh, get your Bible and... Um, and walk with us, study with us as we um, embark upon the study of this lesson. We certainly want to continue to keep uh, our country in prayer, to keep our leadership in prayer today, and certainly be in prayer for our brothers and sisters who also um, we realize that uh, they are experiencing trials as we are. And certainly we need this lesson today to help us to understand um, that we have been set apart for the purposes of God. We want to use this lesson to encourage ourselves that uh, God has a plan for our lives. And it's important that we understand the position that we have been placed in uh, as believers uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, we have quite a bit of ground to cover today. We want to move uh, quickly as we can. Uh, I want to begin uh, uh, just highlighting um, uh, sin. I want to just set the table uh, uh, just to help us to understand what what the definition of sin uh, is and, and, and how the Bible uh, views sin. Uh, we certainly want to uh, use this uh, lesson uh, as it relates to sin in context uh, to help us to understand uh, what the Apostle Paul uh, is trying to drive home in his argument uh, in the book of Romans. But sin, uh, the very definition, is deals with our actions uh, by which humans rebel, right, against God, right? We rebel against God, and we we miss His purpose uh, for our lives, and then we surrender uh, to the power of evil rather than to God. That's you know essentially the definition. But when we think about uh, sin as rebellion, uh, uh, one of the central uh, affirmations throughout the Bible is 
uh, uh, mankind's estrangement from God, right? Uh, that the the cause of 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 our estrangement, if you will, is sin. It is the root cause of all of the problems of humanity, estrangement from God. So, uh, but the Bible, uh, you know, it, it, it gives no formal definition uh, for sin, but it describes sin as an attitude uh, that personifies sin as rebellion against God. So rebellion was at the root of the problem for Adam and Eve. Uh, you'll see that back in Genesis chapter 3. And it has been the root uh, uh, of humanity's plight ever since, right? So uh, we're thinking about uh, 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 the, the, the rebellious nature of, 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 of mankind uh, or human sin, it, it's a universal problem, right? We all sin. All persons uh, without exception are under sin's dominion, right? You'll see that in Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 9 uh, through 23. So we are left to try to understand uh, um, the answer to this dilemma, right? But, uh, but we realize that uh, God is in no way responsible for sin, right? But, but Satan introduced sin when he uh, beguiled Eve. Uh, uh, but the Bible does not teach that sin had its origin with him either. But sin's origin is to be found in humanity's rebellious nature, right? So since Adam and Eve rebelled uh, against the clear command of God, sin has affected uh, humanity. Uh, and so we want to be able to understand these things and, and, and appreciate uh, what happened to us, why Christ needed to come, uh, why this lesson is so important for us to understand that we have been set apart uh, for the purposes of God. We had a rebellious nature that God delivered us from. And I, I just want us to understand, so as Paul uses uh, uh, this particular argument here, it's important also to understand the the nature of the church in Rome, right, was in was uh, at the time was influenced uh, by an edict issued by uh, the emperor Claudius, uh, uh, and he forced Jews uh, to leave the city. You'll see that in Acts um, uh, chapter eighteen, verse two. Uh, but the Roman historian uh, Suetonius uh, tells us that Claudius uh, uh, banished uh, uh, from Rome all of the Jews, those who were continually making disturbances uh, about Christ. So this type of experience uh, uh, probably uh, fostered a certain division within the Roman church between uh, the Gentile and Jewish believers. So with each group uh, contending that it had a better claim on salvation in Christ than did the other. Uh, you can look at Romans chapter 11 verses 13 through 24. So this argument uh, if you will, uh, uh, Paul is addressing some fundamental issues uh, with the church, uh, with the believers to help them to understand the position that Christ put them in. Uh, 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 and so uh, as we think about sin, we've given you a definition uh, as we seek to get into this first outline. We've given you a definition of sin. 
uh, to help us to understand that rebellion uh, uh, is something that we have been delivered from. We are not uh, in conflict with the Word of God. We are not in conflict uh, with our brothers and sisters who uh, have been also freed from the past and, 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 and we have to understand that there is no going backward right we have to press as the Apostle Paul would say we have to press forward right uh, uh, for the uh, mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus our Lord so uh, we have been set free from this past sin of rebellious actions against God the Jews have been freed, and it's not based uh, on a particular group. It's based on faith in Jesus Christ that we have been set free. So now that we have a uh, 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 sort of basis, if you will, I would encourage you to go back and read Romans chapter 4 and also uh, 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 Romans chapter 5. Uh, and so when we get to Romans chapter 6, Paul just sort of, uh, sort of lays into the case uh, to settle the argument, if you will, or the dispute or the discussion about who we are and what God has done through Jesus Christ and where he has brought us uh, 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 essentially by faith in Jesus Christ. And so I want to get into this new uh, walk, this first outline, talking about purpose, right? Uh, and I want to read this uh, uh, from the NIV translation. This is taken from Romans chapter 6, uh, verses uh, 1 through 4. Paul says here in verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Verse 2, By no means. We are those who have died to sin, how can we live in it any longer? Verse 3, Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Verse 4, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, uh, may live a new life. So why is Paul engaging in questions, uh, uh, in rhetorical questions, if you will, uh, to settle the argument to, to it, and it's masterful how the Apostle Paul is probing his hearers with a series of rhetorical questions uh, and, and answers to help them to reflect on the position that they are in to settle this argument about and again we're talking about what kind of sinning is Paul talking about here what kind of actions uh, 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 is Paul pressing here uh, uh, asking the question shall we go on sinning what does he mean by that so we have given you uh, 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 and these actions can be from A to Z uh, uh, when we are rebellious then we do things uh, 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 we uh, uh, are in conflict with the word of God and whatever actions that this rebellion uh, brings about uh, uh, who can define right so 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 we want to be able to understand that the Apostle Paul here uh, is is sharing with his hearers that that uh, he doesn't just specific uh, specifically say a type of sin but he talks about sinning as a way of life as a as a as a means, if you will, that this is the way we're going to go forward in sinning, in, in rebellion. And, 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 and Paul is asking, is, is that what we're doing that, that God's grace may increase? And so he says, by no means. There, there is absolutely no excuse for that kind of, of thinking that Christ died to make us better sinners. 
that that's a foolish argument and it's a foolish discussion it's a foolish position for any believer certainly those in 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 Paul's day but even for us today to think that Christ died uh, 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 putting us in a position of sanctification uh, 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 but but we seem to may believe that he wanted us to be better sinners that's a foolish discussion so uh, Paul says here we are those we who we the believer we who are of faith we who have accepted Jesus Christ uh, 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 as our Lord and Savior we are those who have died right so the conflict or the rebellious nature should have died right with God the conflict if you will we'll share something with you uh, scripturally to help us to understand that that in order for us to uh, uh, really enjoy uh, uh, our relationship with God it I would press to say that we enjoy uh, our relationship with God based on our understanding of the position right why are we praising God if we have not been put in a position of sanctification uh, uh, and God has rescued us from that rebellious nature that produced all kinds of actions right and before and prior to being saved we were missing the purposes as I shared with you early we were literally missing the mark for what God had desired or purpose uh, for our lives and if it had not been right for the grace of God you and I would have eternally missed it right we would have eternally missed it for all time and to be clear some have missed the mark eternally in other words they died without the fulfillment of understanding the purposes of Christ though so this is a relevant argument right that that Paul is having here uh, and he uses death uh, uh, in a way to to help these hearers understand that they have literally died to sin right they have died to sin so he says how can we live in it any longer right how can we do this how can we make this kind of a uh, 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 case if you will or assertion that this is the plan of God it is not so Paul asks uh, 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 another question in verse 3 or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death so we have to have a whole nother discussion about the, the, the symbolic nature of baptism and full immersion and why we believe that and it doesn't save us right the water baptism but it signifies to the public that we have been fully immersed in death in the sinful nature right that rebellious nature has been as someone is lowered into the ground and buried so so we have been baptized into the death of sin right so so this is what Paul is trying to help them to understand uh, 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 when we used and, and churches have used this practice uh, 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 for, for generations now to symbolize that this is the message that the the convert if you will is sending to the public that they have died they they have uh, 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 agreed with the word of God uh, with the purpose of the cross with the death of Jesus Christ they understand uh, 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 from and we'll talk about the kind of death Jesus died a little bit later on in our last outline but but Paul is trying to underscore what these positions uh, uh, of our lives really mean uh, and what messages that we're sending uh, 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 to the world uh, publicly through baptism so Paul says in verse 4 we were therefore buried 
with him through baptism into death, death of sin, right? Death of this rebellious nature in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too uh, may live a new life. So when we go down into the water, we are fully uh, 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 immersed in, in water, uh, uh, symbolizing that we have made a, 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 a full a breaking away, if you will, of sin. And then when we come up out of that water, uh, symbolically we're saying that we are new or that we are walking new or that we are living different. In other words, we are walking in agreement with the word of God, that that rebellious nature that, 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 that brought about so many of our uh, actions against God, uh, 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 that that we have done away with that, and we are we are starting new, right? So Paul is is important that we uh, 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 understand that uh, as sin increases, so does God's love and grace expand to cover and completely eliminate sin. I want you to look at Romans chapter five, verses twenty. Uh, in, in, in 21 so you might say well Reverend well what if I continue or what if I make mistakes or uh, what if I what kind of sin whatever my past was and, and it's important to understand that that what God has done through Jesus Christ in our lives is to free us from what we did in the past all of it right not some of it all of it and God has saved us from the past and, and if you and I continue or we have occasion where we sin right which we will do right in word thought deed right and 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 and, and action the, the 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 argument that I would make uh with you about that is that the the concern if you will is that it not be habitual the first epistle of John I believe chapter 4 and chapter 5 will give you some reference into that so so those of us that have died to sin we don't practice it anymore right so so we would be going against what Paul is saying here if we're going to go on sinning that means we're going to try to say to God well we need more grace because we're not we're not going to stop sinning that is not the position that you and I are in so the the the, the issue of sin uh, has to be uh, 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 looked at or viewed on an occasional basis, not as on a, a, a habitual right practice or sinning, if you will. I hope this is making sense for us, uh, and it's important that, and I'm thankful that the uh, God is using the Apostle Paul uh, to help believers understand the position that they are in. This is a doctrinal discussion. Right. This is fully doctrinal, uh, 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 theological discussion about where we are and who we are. And this is the kind of thing that new converts need to understand when they, quote unquote, give their lives to Christ. What does that mean? What kind of position? And there uh, uh, should be someone to uh, 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 doctrinally explain that to them as Paul is doing here to help these individuals, to help them to understand what baptism means uh, 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 and what our confession of faith means to us in the, in the things that we have been rescued from. And so in God's eyes, this, this issue of our past and even our present uh, uh, sinfulness has been addressed, right? And, and, and God seeks to bring us into that future where we don't have to deal with any of it, right, on any level, right? Uh, uh, we'll certainly be moved from the, uh, uh, at some point, from the very presence of sin. But right now, as we continue to live in this sinful world, in this fallen uh, uh, society, and, and, and even in, through the fallen nature, God has taken care of the past through Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul is saying here and helping these believers to understand that they have been put into a position uh, personally by God through Jesus Christ to a new way of life. So as we strive to share our new life, 
uh, in Christ, how can we ensure that our testimonies have no hint of boastful bragging or any pride or delight whatsoever in past sin. So so we don't need to be patting ourselves on the back. We need to be shouting and praising and thanking God that we have been delivered. Right? We have been delivered from that rebellious attitude that says I'm not giving uh, uh, myself to Christ. I'm not turning my uh, 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 members of my body over to Christ. We need to be thanking God for the position that we're in, right? So our second outline is entitled uh, "This Proclamation: This New Life," taken from uh, Romans chapter six, verses five through nine, and again from the uh, 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 NIV translation. Paul is still uh, hammering home this point. And the Bible says, verse 5, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Verse 6, For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, uh, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free. I want, you to, I want you to hear this, church. You have been set free. I don't, you know, sometimes, and I know we, we say, well, Reverend, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I'm free. But the Bible is saying you are. God is saying you are. God is saying he has, he has set you free. Right? from sin from this rebellious nature so through this resurrection i wish we had a little time to talk about the holy ghost because uh, uh th th that's a relevant discussion because what we were unable to do uh and how we were unable to live lives pleasing to god simply because we had no power and this is in, a, in effect a discussion we could have about the law the mosaic law uh, and, and, and I want you to understand that I believe Psalm 19 would help us to understand there's nothing wrong with the law. There's nothing wrong with it, but it simply had no power to save or to deliver or to keep the children of Israel from going backward. But now that the Holy Ghost has come, right, the resurrection, the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, uh, the Holy Ghost now uh, uh, arms us and equips us with power that we can live the kinds of lives uh, 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 that is pleasing to God. So I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2 uh, when you have some time. So uh, we don't have to be ruled or governed by uh, a sin. We shouldn't uh, have the problem uh, uh, you know, before we would say, well, I couldn't help myself. Well, a believer uh, uh, should have been delivered from that state of mind, right? Your position now uh, 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 through Jesus Christ says to you now, you can help it, right? You don't have to live uh, uh, this way anymore. You don't have to be rebellious toward the word of God, which, which, which essentially brings about all of these other actions, right? They could be many, right? So we want to continue on to verse 7 because uh, 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 Paul says here, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin, verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe, right? This is important. This is important. What you believe is critical in your position, right? I want you to look at Isaiah 53, verse 1, when you have some time. What you believe, what you understand. Paul says here, we believe that we will also live with him. Verse 9, for we know, this is the confidence, that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him so paul builds on his discourse concerning the believer's new life and purpose by confirming that it results from being united with christ through identifying 
with his death and resurrection. Watch this. By faith, by faith, we know that our old nature was crucified and thus put to death, allowing the new life to be birthed and resurrected with Christ. So as new creations in Christ, believers are set free from sin and the stronghold it once held over us. We are made free to live for God, not to fall back into shame of serving and satisfying our sinful lusts and desires. These are the actions. But these actions are, are, are brought about by a rebellious nature, right? So as we crucify our carnal desires and submit to Christ, we are freed from sin. So submitting to Christ means welcoming him as both Lord and personal Savior. John chapter 1 verse 1, 29 when you have time. So our faith in Christ uh, propels us to believe with a confident hope uh, that we are crucified. If we are crucified and dead with Christ, then we shall be raised with Christ. So this phrase has present and future implications. So in other words, we are waiting on the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What are we waiting for in that event? Right? What are we waiting for? What are, what are we expecting God to do? In a practical way, if I could just share this with you. What the Holy Ghost is doing is preparing us to be with God forever, right? So we are dying every day. That old nature, something about you died yesterday. Something about you died today. Uh, something that God is going after uh, in our lives. He has to put to death. Through, through, through the, through his power, right? And we should, in, in other words, you should realize change in your life. You should be able to look in the mirror of, of God's word and see change in your life based on what God is saying. If we believe these things, there's going to be activity in your life. I want you to understand that today. And this is the reason why. And we have to help converts to understand that God is going to make changes in them. This is practical as well as it is spiritual. God is going to make changes in your life based on the fact that 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 he is against that nature. And if he doesn't help us through his power, uh, we will go backward. Right, We will go backward. So God is constantly working in our lives, not just in the present, but, in, but for the future. We should realize that today. So we are raised with him now and will reign forever, forever with him uh, uh, in the eternal future. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. So the knowledge of Christ is, resurrection and conquering death gives us inspiration in this new life freed from sin and death to proclaim to others as our Lord and Savior so so now you are a witness right this is something that uh, you know if, if we go back to uh, what I shared earlier about these uh, Jews and Gentiles perhaps arguing one think that they I thought that they had a better position over the other. Uh, but while we're squabbling about this, we're not witnessing. Our lives have been turned around uh, uh, by God to be living examples, to be testimonies, uh, uh, to share, even if it's a what I would call a silent witness that you're not moving your mouth, but your life is moving. Right. Let your light so shine that men might see your good works. I believe in Matthew chapter five would say something like that, 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 that there should be some light now. Right. That there should be some effective practice of witnessing 
who God is, that he is your Lord, he is your master, and he is your savior. He is the, the, uh, the deliverer uh, from, uh, to us. Uh, this is how we recognize him, and this is one that we need to ascribe uh, 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 to Jesus Christ, that he is our savior, right? He delivered us from the penalty and the power of sin. He delivered us from what should by by right happen to us, right? Uh, uh, we were we were uh, on a course, right, of destruction before Jesus stepped in, and, and I would add in the nick of time, and saved us. So He is our Lord and Savior. So unlike every other living soul, Christ lives and will not die again. So Christ conquered death to die no more, making a path for us to live eternally with God. Would also submit to you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, one that's very familiar with us as we think about the resurrection. This is such a deep conversation, but I, I hope that at least puts us on a path to understand the position. If, if, if I were going to give you a closing thought, uh, uh, this is an excellent way to see how we have been sanctified or how sanctification uh, uh, is an ongoing process in our lives that God intended uh, uh, for us to be with him for all time. And you and I are on a path to be with God for all time. And he is doing things in our lives and he is making preparations in our lives and changing our thoughts and our deeds and conduct to help us to understand this is not what he saved you for right this is not who you are supposed to be this is why the past is so strange this is why you don't fit in why you don't mix why you don't uh, uh you're you're not in the clique anymore and why people even will take action against you because now you're you're not uh, rolling with them anymore if you will uh, but God has made some changes in your life he has set you free and as I said earlier there is no going back so why is boldness needed to proclaim your new life in Christ well, this is something that we need to be uh, 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 standing firm on I would give you Romans chapter 8 if we had some time and I mentioned to you about the Holy Ghost because he is your witness that you are a child of God he confirms or bears witness with your spirit right that you are a child of God and you can be bold about that because it's happening to you you realize it you understand you feel it you see it God is talking to you God is revealing to you God is opening up things for you in a way to help you to understand that you are his child you are his son you are his daughter this is the position that 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 you and I have been placed in and I should tell you God will not change his mind right he will not change his mind and so many times we try to go backward and we, we get chastened for that by God and we, we try to pick up the past, if you will, that we have been delivered from and you will cause a heavy chastening to come up on your life by God, by your Savior, because this is not the position any longer, right? This is not the way for you and I any longer. That has been put to death. I hope that's, that makes sense for you today. And lastly, new power, right? This is the persuasion. This is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 10 through 14. And again, from the NIV translation, the death he died, talking about Jesus, he died to sin once for all. So he died, Jesus died for our rebellious nature right he died for our sinful nature that rebellion that brought on all of these different actions right if you ever want to think about uh, uh, what you were delivered from you don't have to go to the kind of specific sin uh, 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 that you may have committed 
you could go quickly to your rebellious attitude toward God that brought about all of the actions, right, that God delivered us from. And all of this was placed on Jesus Christ and that he put it to death, all right, through himself. He died uh, once for everybody. This is something that the Jews and Gentiles needed to understand. So neither one of them were in a better position than the other. They both had rebellious natures, right? It wasn't a Jewish problem. It wasn't a, 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 a Gentile problem. It was a nature problem, right? And that affects all of us. But the life he lives, Christ, he lives to God. I would also give you Philippians chapter 2 when you have time. But verse 11, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ, right? We are dead to this now. Therefore, verse 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. So uh, I would just say this to you. It's going to come up. The old nature, the unregenerate part of, a, of our lives walks side by side with the regenerate nature. What am I saying? The old you always looks for an opportunity to overtake the new you. You know, when God delivers us, we don't get to, you know, we don't get uh, flown off or shipped off to some deserted island where we don't have to see anyone or see the, the uh, drive by the things or the places where we used to go. God delivers us, saves us, sets us free, and places us uh, essentially right back in the the area, the, the, the environment whereby we have to stand and be witnesses, right? So in other words, you and I are going to face temptations from the past. But our job, if you will, is to not to let the past conflict or overtake the new. We don't have to let the old person take over the new person. And we, when, we, when that happens, that means that we have lost the battle with rebelling. And that happens, right? We fall down, right? But we get up, right? We don't stay there. So when these things happen, we need to share with individuals how they need to uh, deal with the old nature, with the past, even the people of the past who who come to us wanting to pull us backward when the Lord has set us free. And so instead of going backward, we need to, to say to, to the past, no, I'm not going backward, I'm going forward, and be able to share with, with individuals through your practical life that God has set you free. So I don't want you to think that just because God has saved you that you don't have to deal with the past. You do have to deal with it, right? But we don't have to let it. We don't have to let it become a part of us. And we don't have to let the old nature reign or have a position in us. We don't have to rebel. You still have the capacity, even now through the power of the Holy Spirit, to help you in that battle, to help you in that struggle. I'm talking to me now, church. But I want us to understand that there are no uh, 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 perfect Christians, if you will. As I said to you earlier, there will be occasion, right, for uh, uh, our rebelling or our falling down or our sinfulness. But we have to watch habitual nature, habitual habits, uh, 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 this type of uh, uh, sinning, if you will, uh, that, that, that takes over uh, who God has purposed for us to be. That's something, and that's why Paul is sharing it uh, with these individuals here. You can't let this happen so that you start obeying uh, uh, the evil desires rather than uh, 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 obeying the Spirit of God. Or rebelling against the Spirit of God, rebelling against the Word of God. I hope it makes sense to you, church. Verse 13 Do not offer any part of yourself 
to sin as an instrument of wickedness. This is something we have to watch out for. This is in a practical way, right? But rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Those who have been put in right standing. This is back talking to that position. So now you and I have to run in prayer and ask God to help us in times of conflict, in times of disturbance, in times of instability in our Christian lives, in, in, in the midst of trial and tribulation, in the midst of the past, in the, in, in the, in the midst of the, the evil desires. And, you, and you'll know, you know when it comes up as well as I do. And so we have to ask God to help us uh, in times of trouble, right, in, in spiritual trouble. Right. Even in our thinking, we have to ask God to help us. God, I'm going the wrong way. God, I'm thinking wrong. God. And if and if we and if we would use God as our ally, as a savior, Jesus is on standby. Uh, I heard Jesus say this to his disciples. I believe in John chapter 14, he was telling his disciples, I will not leave you. Right. And we have to understand that today God will not leave you. Right. The question is, did we leave him? But he will never leave you. I believe Hebrew chapter 13. He will never, never leave you nor forsake you. But we have to ask God to help us when we get in uh, places where we are struggling with the old nature, with the past, even with people of the past. Right. When we get into those hot uh, uh, temptations, if you will. We have to ask God to help us. This happens, right? This is the reality of the Christian walk, right? But it's something that can be overcome through God, not apart from him. You will never be able to do this by yourself. But we don't need to treat God as though he hasn't seen it before and that he doesn't know that you're dealing with it and that he, he doesn't understand it. But as the Holy Ghost helps us to understand that he is on standby, right? That's that uh, power that we have. And lastly, verse 14, for sin shall no longer be your master. Isn't that beautiful to know? It will no longer be your master because you are not under the law. Again, there's nothing wrong with the law, right? But we are under grace we are not trying to justify ourselves through uh, 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 trying to live perfect lives if you will and this is something that 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 Israel didn't understand and this was the the the, the problem with the law uh, it was so complex in the human nature uh, uh, could easily get out of control there was no way there was no way that the children of Israel could keep all the commandments of God consistently, right? So God came uh, uh, and sent Jesus to us to reveal us because that, that, that curse or that, 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 that repercussions of the law brought about death. And, 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 and God did not want that. And so we still use the law to help us to understand or to bring us, I believe Romans chapter 9 would help us to understand, uh, and even into Romans chapter 10, that Christ is the end of the law, right? He is the fulfillment of the law. Matthew chapter 5 would help us to understand. And so we need to don't discard the law, use the law, and let the law lead you to Jesus Christ. And this is something that Israel, uh, Paul was, was, was amazed in Romans chapter uh, 10 that they were trying to justify uh, uh, themselves. Right? They thought that, 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 that law keeping was enough. And, but Paul said they needed to be saved. Right? They should have come to Jesus Christ, but they wanted to establish a righteousness, Israel, of their own law keeping. And they failed miserably. So you will fail uh, trying to keep yourself, right, through good morals, if you will. You will fail miserably 
trying to justify yourself by uh, unto God by the works you have done. Right? There's nothing wrong with the works that you may do. To be clear. But they cannot save. They cannot deliver. They cannot set free. So this is the thing that the law should help us to understand. That we still need to be saved. Right? We are under the grace of God. And this is something that believe Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 would help us to understand you know, we cannot justify ourselves there is no work that you can do however noble it may be right that can save only Jesus can save this is why God gets all the glory all the honor and all the praise right Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what this lesson has uncovered today. And Father, I just pray for any and everyone under the sound of my voice that you would help us to understand the position. This grace that we have been given, this position that Jesus Christ through his own sacrifice and the shedding of his blood has this position that you have put us in is such a blessing we cannot even describe it we cannot understand fully all of the things all of the things that you have done for us through such a grace we don't understand this grace God but we pray that you would enlighten us to help us to understand it's the best position we could ever be in it's the best thing that could ever happen to us that we have been saved and brought into this position we thank you for setting us apart even in this world that people might see that your power is real that the reality of salvation is available to everyone who believes and calls upon your name father we just pray for each and every one under the sound of my voice and we realize that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of god but thanks be to god who kept on giving grace in the midst of our falling down in the midst of our shame who kept on giving us grace when we didn't get it right who kept on giving grace when we couldn't get ourselves together who kept on giving grace when we needed a savior we needed someone to deliver us from the penalty and the power and the dominion of sin father we thank you we thank you from the depths of our hearts that we have someone who never slumbers, who does not sleep, whose eyes in every place beholding the evil and the good, that you are able to, to save us and to keep us from falling. Father, we just lift up families today. We realize that trouble is on the horizon, but we thank you for the grace that has spared us from days past to this present day. Father, we lift up all of the sick and the shut-in, the bereaved families today. We need your grace to cover us, to cover us through our circumstances. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the household of faith. Father, that we might come together in a way that we all might appreciate and lift up one standard, one praise unto God who set the Jew free and also set the Gentile free, that there is no distinction in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that we are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ by the blood and through the blood and through the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word and those messengers that you have sent to encourage us and to plead with us to give our lives to Christ for those who have not surrendered, O oh God, who continue to be rebellious toward your word and the admonition through Jesus Christ, Father, who, who came and, and demonstrated in a public way that everybody needed to be saved. We thank you for it and we call it done. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. God bless you, church. Just know that I love you and I'm praying for us all that we would come together and that we would continue to lift one another in prayer and be thankful. Church, be thankful to God. I know it may not be uh, 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 everything may not be easy in your life, but be thankful. Be thankful that you are saved, that you have been set free from who you used to be 
And now you and I are new creatures in Jesus Christ. So until, until, until such time that the Lord would permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.